Today we're going to convert this uh, 2009 Mac Pro into the fully functioning NAS. Stay tuned, I'm RJ and this is Adventures in Tech. So at the moment we don't have a NAS at home and I really want one. So when I went on the internet I found out if I want a 4 bay NAS it's about 5 to 600 euros. If I want a 5 or 6 bay NAS it's going to be way more expensive. At the moment I only got two hard drives laying around and this old Mac Pro. So I want to know if we can convert this Mac Pro into a fully functioning NAS. Since the Mac Pro we open it up. It has quite a lot of storage space for hard drives. We can store uh, three more hard drives here and behind this we've got the DVD drives and if we take that out then on the back side it's two more SATA ports as well. So let's see if I can get this back. There we go. So the previous owner has installed a OWC solid state drive which uh, I'm gonna leave in for now since I only got two hard drives so I've got three sp spots here so that's fine. And let's get started. So, already missing a screw. There we go. So we have to find a screw for that one. So I'm gonna put it in slot two and slot three. Totally fine. And there's also already an RX480 video card in here, so that means it's metal compatible, so we can run macOS Mojave. And we'll see, we might be installing macOS Catalina. Um, I'm gonna install the hard drive first, and then we're gonna boot it up. Actually see if it still works, because I'm not entirely sure. So let's get started. Let's get my toolkit out here. Okay, so this should go like this because it slides into the Mac Pro, so the SATA connection and power needs to be on the outside. And now it's just Tightening these screws. This is actually quite an easy installation. Uh, also, if I need to replace a hard drive or if I want to upgrade in the future, it's quite easy to do. You can do it hard drive by hard drive without any issue. So, while we're screwing these, I'm thinking about how I want to set this up. I'm think I'm gonna set these two hard drives up in a configuration where they form one hard drive uh, combined. So I've got a total storage of four gigabyte, four terabytes. So that in the future when I install, for example, a four or an eight terabyte hard drive, I can, uh, or upgrade everything, I can back it up to one another four terabyte drive and then replace these with two other four terabyte drives, for example. My goal of this NAS is to have uh, some shared file storage for things like backups and well, just centralized file storage so that I can use over all my computers and to have, a run, have it running a Plex Media server so we can watch uh, movies and TV shows I've got on my computer straight from, uh, from the NAS onto our TV. And thankfully this is Apple so this is going to be way easy. Slide it in, give it a little push, there we go, and the other one, and then we're going to put the cover back on. And 
and then connect this. Oh, what is that happening? Here, this is the early 2009 Mac Pro. We've got 30 gigabytes of RAM, two quad-core processors, and we go to storage. And we go to manage, we don't see anything. So if we open up disk utility, there we go. Here are our two terabyte hard drives, so our two two terabyte hard drives. And we're gonna combine those as one big hard drive. So we go to file, RAID assistant, and we say we wanna have it striped. So splits the data evenly across two or more disks without parity of information with speed as an intended goal. So we create one large fast hard drive. We could also go for mirrored, which means that uh, one Hard drive is going to duplicate everything on the first one, so we always have a, a backup at hand. If one of the hard drives fails, then no worries. So we're gonna select those two hard drives, and we call this a NAS one. It's gonna have four terabyte Mac OS, Mac OS extended. That, that's fine. Go next, yes, create. I must say, this is a very user-friendly process of setting this up. I'm very happy with that. Waiting for the new RAID to spin up, mounting disk. There we go, RAID created successfully. So now, here we've got one four terabyte NAS drive. And I think we can also see that in about this Mac. We go to storage. No, it doesn't show up here. Not sure why, actually. It does show up here, though. So, it's totally usable. So, let's create a folder. Hello, my folder. Yeah, that works. So, the next thing I'm going to do is install Plex Media Server. Plex Media Server allows us to stream files and stuff like that. So we're gonna go to Google, Plex Media Server. And the magic word download. There we go. Already selected Mac, download. And while that's downloading, we're gonna share, set up our file sharing. So in system preferences, we go to sharing. We say we want to do file sharing. We're going to call this machine Mac NAS. Wow, Mac NAS. Looks way cooler. We're going to add our NAS drive as a shared folder. And from this moment on, everyone on the network with correct credentials can access this uh just like an external hard drive or well, actually as a network drive as an s uh it doesn't matter if you're on the windows or on the mac it will work for both of them we are also going to add uh screen sharing which means that when this computer is downstairs and in, uh, in the closet that we can still uh take over the screen using vnc so we're gonna close this now. This has been downloaded. Plex Media Server. Let's bring that to Applications. And start it up. Verifying. Yes, I'm sure. Okay, we've got a new icon here on the top. Open the login, good. Open Plex. Your home screen is empty. I'm logged in. And we're gonna create two folders, movies, TV shows. We're gonna add Big Bug Bunny to movies. And then here it is. 
our Magnus. We can play the movie. That works. Good. And now we should be able to use this from well, everywhere on the network. So we've got Plex installed. There's a test movie edit. Let's see if we can view it and extract files from another machine. So this is my MacBook Air. Let's open it up. Now we have a functioning NAS. We've got two hard drives in there now, four terabytes of storage. We can upgrade that later on. We've got three more available SATA ports for future hard drives, two in the DVD drive base and one below. We're gonna, so yeah, this is quite future proof. And at all for actually nothing because already at the Mac Pro lying around, I've already got those hard drives and I just saved myself between 5 to 600 euros if you want to do this at home then buy a second hand Mac Pro, they're gonna last you forever this one is from 2009, 11 years old and still has well, still just runs those processors are really strong uh, they don't break very easily and if they do break you can find second hand parts quite cheaply on the different marketplaces so yeah I think this is quite a success thank you for watching and I'll see you next time